Stephanie Levin, General Manager of ITA. Um, in regards to item number one, which was basically a verbal update as to the status of city's IT technology system, um, it's hard to just in a nutshell encapsulate where we are without a robust PowerPoint and many, you know, many detailed slides. But um, we have made progress over the past few years in trying to, um, I'd say, whittle down the portfolio of applications that we have. We still have a lot. So I don't want to make any um, statements that we don't. But we're having more success in trying to whittle down the sheer amount of what we have and move towards standardization, which is important. Because the more standardized we are, the less maintenance activities that we're going to have. Um, part of my analogy sometimes that I use is if Tony Royster and GSD had 30,000 customized Priuses, it would take a lot of people to maintain all of them. You know, we have 30,000 customized desktops, and so we're trying to move to more standard desktop configurations. And we've implemented a couple of really key applications in the city. Um, you know, I'd probably say most notably putting in the new financial management system in July, so now we have a really good core set of financials that we can now build upon um, to fix some of our other financial processes in the city and give a lot more accurate reporting. Um, I would say that that was a, a huge project. It took three or four years to complete, and we did it very, very successfully. There's a lot more to be done in the financial system space. Um, so I don't want to say that we're finished because there's other processes. But one of the things that we're working on now is a financial systems roadmap so that we can prioritize which financial systems go next, realizing, you know, that we have to live within the constraints, particularly the financial constraints of the city as well as the resource constraints. Um, some of our technology in the uh, public safety area is getting old. And so this year you'll see some capital requests to continue to upgrade some of that infrastructure just so that we can keep it running. And we have some infrastructure running the financial systems and other systems that also needs an upgrade at, you know, in, in certain either hardware or software components to keep it running. So you know, this year's theme for us is going to be upgrading to keep the lights on and then figuring out, you know, more um, efficient ways of managing our portfolio. In addition to that, we're using the Information Technology Oversight Committee, the ITOC, to help with all the departments and trying to get to the standard, you know, set of, of processes and systems and, and use that as a governance forum for the IT community. Is that it? Well, I could go on for five hours, but I don't think you want to hear it for five hours. Uh, no, I don't. Um, <laughs> I want to uh, sort of capsulize um, the, the overriding theme that I hear whenever I talk to anybody about IT systems at the city of Los Angeles, obviously mostly uh, city employees and typically at the highest ranks of city employment, so the administrative uh, cadre. The biggest uh, concern is that uh, the word discombobulation comes to mind in the sense that um, we have every major department with a different system and many of the other departments as well having their own systems and even if they uh, have a sort of um, even if they bought into uh, your system, uh, they have ancillary services that that sort of change the function so it's very different than, uh, one department is very different than the next. Um, so that's, that's one is, what is the global picture on how we're going to bring all of that under one umbrella, which, which I think is absolutely necessary to uh, deal with the issue of uh, efficiencies and effectiveness uh, so that departments are are communicating with the same language uh, 
when they when they talk to other departments. Um, secondly, in terms of community service, uh, the, because we are a service oriented organization, uh, how can we make our our website more uh, practical and more usable uh, by the general public? Um, and I would I would want to have a particular focus on those areas that don't particularly have a uh, a, uh, a solid grasp of, of the, the latest technology available to them. Now, the youngest generations uh, have the greatest access to uh, new technology and computers. Um, and typically they have it at school or in the libraries. So they're very comfortable with uh, all kinds of different iterations of, of how we do this. The question is not whether or not we can create a system that is accessible and usable, but is it consistent? Uh, and and so with all the different systems that we deploy, you know, I, I figure a 15-year-old uh, kid could, could meander through our system and figure things out. But is it the best way for them to do it? Uh, what's the quickest way? What's the most efficient, efficient way, not just for city employees, but for the public, more importantly? What's the most efficient way for them to use um, their contacts with the city of Los Angeles um, via technology? So those are two broad questions that, that I ask, and it's sort of to set the tone of where this committee is certainly going to be focused in a year and a half. And also, let me say for the... For for public, all the you know the the three or four people that are listening to this outside of here, um, the I'm not going to get a whole lot done in a year and a half, uh, but I hope to be able to set the tone for the next generation of technology that that needs to come to the city of Los, Los Angeles, or for the next several generations that need to come. Ultimately, we would like one fully integrated system with all the departments on the same infrastructure. And secondly, uh, and probably more important than the first, but they're so tied together it's hard to separate, um, how to make it most user-friendly to the general public and, and efficient. Um, if I could comment on those points, because those are really excellent points. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, the city of L.A. and all of our systems. You're just loaded with those today, aren't you? <laughs> i got to use the grace as my example. <laughs> Discombobulation. Um, that was your word. Um, everything sort of grew up independently. And we, what we've been trying to do is make order out of chaos. And I think with the financial systems, to really use that as a guide, you know, we brought all of the departments together and really tried to focus on commonalities and getting efficiencies and looking at the process and trying to drive out things that were not value added. And that approach worked really, really well. Um, you know, in laying the foundation. And so we'd like to utilize that model going forward for a lot of the other areas that we know can be common. I mean, asset management, we've talked a lot about that, you know, vehicle asset management in particular. Vehicles are vehicles. You know, we shouldn't have to have seven different asset management systems. So, you know, we're looking at areas where we can find commonalities and not differences. And over time, you know, we can set a strategic plan in place and then march down, you know, implementing the plan in terms of what the priorities are of the city. But there certainly is a lot that can be that is common and can be brought to one one environment as opposed to multiple. The other piece that we're working on right now, and it's another item on the agenda, but the strategic um, uh, technology services um, proposal that we have out there to bring in somebody to help us take a look at our technology infrastructure and figure out what to do about it, because just like um, departments have their own applications. A lot of them have their own hardware that they're managing, and hardware is becoming much more of a commodity 
and it's becoming more consolidated and and it's not as much value added you know in the past there weren't a lot of alternatives to it but now there's a lot more alternatives for other people to run it or run it here or where to run it i mean there's there's so many things that can be done in combinations thereof as opposed to the traditional model which is pretty much all we had a couple of years ago so we really have to look at our whole underlying technology environment and figure out how do we run that efficiently and that is a process that's you know we've started and is underway well I, I, I view it as as almost identical to building our transportation system where we're building on old infrastructure uh, and we've already created traffic problems uh, with that old infrastructure we have freeways that um, are completely congested and, and are not as efficient as they used to be. In fact, there are many times when I use the streets even over, you know, 10 mile drives rather than jump on the freeway. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. I can tell you specifically, when I pick up my daughter from her preschool program in North Hollywood, it is easier for me to take the streets to Panorama City than it is to jump on the freeway at Oxnard and go up just just a few miles because at Roscoe it just it's it's a it's a, a very slow do it's always going like five miles an hour from four o'clock till about six o'clock in the evening so this is very similar because we have to I mean if we had a blank sheet of paper and could build a transportation system um, or a, a, a technology system we would it would be completely different than what we've got. So okay. how do you, how do, the question is, how do you go back and peel back the layers? I've got to believe that it's easier than doing the transportation system, honestly, because it's hard to move concrete. At the same time, uh, old habits die hard. And so the question is, how do we, is, is there a point where the system just no longer serves us? Like we know that there are literally, um, hundreds of dead links in, in our system where people want to use our system and they end up with this page not found or page not available or uh, whatever it says and, and and yet we keep relying on that same system and we're not getting more pages found well, so why are we doing it it's, it's like uh, we're beating a dead horse so the question is do, should we bury the horse and get on with it or uh, with something new and fresh, or, or can we do that without causing tremendous disruption? Well, well, you know, this sort of segues into your second point in terms of making the systems and the environment more user-friendly, more customer-friendly. And, you know, to that end, we've been doing quite a lot of number of things. Um, the, the whole city has been very or oriented towards departments, you know, departments' websites, departments' applications, which completely is the opposite way than we need to be looking. We need to be looking at what does a customer or a resident or a visitor, you know, need from the city, which crosses multiple departments. So one thing that we've done that we'll demo today is we've, we're in the process of redesigning LACity.org and we have some usability experts that are going to come in and assist us because sometimes technology folks can get too close to the details and lose the trees from the forest to the far with that's that analogy the forest from the trees whatever i said it backwards anyway um, make sure that from a real customer perspective it, it it's intuitive it's easy to use you can get to what you need and then underlying all of that we're starting to change the applications underneath to be much more process focused i mean we have a vision out there and it's it's out there it's a vision but ultimately where you could go onto the website or on your you know your smartphone or whatever and you have my la and on your my la you can pay your bills with one credit card maybe including DWP and you know your property tax and whatever and shows you have three dogs and no dog licenses and by the way you know well, I mean, uh, we have this concept. that's very nice to say yes we know that technology is available right now right we're, we're not getting there and by the time we get there there'll be another technology so the, the question it, this is a tough question it's, it's, it's the toughest question 
and the thing is with technology, it's information technology, it's always been the toughest question. You can never completely catch up because some other jurisdiction is going to come up with a better system and, and, and we sort of need to leapfrog over it. But how can we create, I think the fundamental question is how can we create a, a system that's flexible enough to, to go through uh, several different uh, changes without disrupting the fundamental services. Uh, uh, I, I think more. we're making progress. And, you know, to your point, we're, you know, we're catching up. We're doing in a big way catching up and in some way trying to leapfrog since we were so far behind. Um, and we're laying the foundation, I think, for for things that can be a lot more flexible. It's not perfect, you know, nothing is. And I think we're doing the best we can given the constraints we've been given as well. But the Catching up is very different than doing the best we can. Doing the best we can under uh, extremely strenuous circumstances, downsizing in staff, uh, and uh, under-resourcing your department. Doing the best you can may be acceptable under those terms, but catching up is quite a different thing. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not with you on that yet. You have to prove to me that we're actually, uh, we're actually making progress uh, as opposed to even sl slipping further behind in terms of the services we provide our people. Well, that that's going to be vetted out, I think, over the next couple of months as we go through the strategic planning exercise, as well as you know when we go through some of the various initiatives and show you the work that's that's the good work that's going on in the department, as well as the rest of the city departments. It's not an answer that we're going to be able to give you right now. I think that, yes, in some cases we are catching up. In other cases we're leapfrog leapfrogging ahead. And we're always quite, we always ask the question, should, you know, in IT world, should we rip, rip or replace? You know, do we rip it apart and try and fix it or do we replace it? And in some cases it's just easier to throw the old thing out and put something new in. And it's just going through that cost-benefit analysis to figure out what's going to be the most appropriate. Well, and, and that's, that also doesn't, uh, I'm not sure that takes in the human uh, factors that play into this. For example, the general managers and their fiefdoms and their desire, they have a system that's built and tailored to their particular department in the way they are comfortable with, or they put their stamp of approval on it and they want to prove it works, whatever. Uh, but it doesn't work when you consider the collaborative uh, process that we go through to do stuff around here. Um, and so uh, how are we going to get uh, departmental buy-in and general manager buy-in in particular are, are, how are the the uh, staff and, and general managers going to be incorporated into the study process uh, so that that uh, uh, you know that, that we really get a system that works well it, it's critically important you know we have an IT policy committee where we get the directors of systems involved in the discussions on the various technology issues and areas that we're looking at. We have the iTalk also as an opportunity. And then I also try and meet individually with the general managers so that they understand what it is we're trying to do. You know, we won't succeed in making it 100% common. There are applications that are very specific to each individual department. The, that won't go away. I mean, like the LAPD has systems to run jails. Nobody else runs jails. Um, you know, so we're not going to get away from that. But what we will be able to do is say, well, how does that integrate into the rest of this environment? You know, are we using the same tools as a common, or do we have to do something completely separate? Um, there might be co the commonalities in, in the products that we use, for example. So, you know, it's having those discussions at all the various levels to determine um, where the commonalities exist. And it's also reorienting people to say, how can we do things common as opposed to how can we be different? And we really stress that theme quite a bit in the FMS project because in the beginning it was we can't all exist on a common financial system, particularly when we started to get into areas like accounts receivable where it's a little bit more um, tied to the actual business and how they and the department and how they do their business. 
However, I think we were pretty successful in trying to make it as common as possible across the various departments. Because I think at the end of the day, you know, the general managers want, you know, the well-being of the city to be first and foremost. And so they're pretty practical in, in their approach. And, and let me tell you, in the instances where it has to be different, whether it's a legal, a regulatory, a practice, you know, in that particular field, we have to take that into consideration. We can't just brush that under the rug. So it's, it's really a collaborative process to come up with, you know, trying to move towards common systems. Okay. Did you want to show us the video or? I'm going to have Madeline come up. She is our okay. web gourette. Gourette. Yes. And Mark. And I'm going to have them talk a little bit about. Actually, cover that on number three. Oh, oh they're co okay. covering it on. I'm sorry. I'm okay, then um, at this time we have uh, public comment cards. So let's have Paul Kim. And then uh, John Hawkins. <coughs> Hello. Uh, an honorable council member, uh, my name is Paul Kim. I'm the union representative for LA City engineers, programmers, and communication engineers uh, for SCIU Local 721. Um, I might wanted to actually talk about what uh, Ms. Levin was referring to on the strategic advisor for technology services that uh, they're looking to contract out. Um, it's an RFP that um, ITA is attempting to hire the services of an outside consultant in the amount of $2 million um, to evaluate uh, what the city of Los Angeles uh, does with their IT services and make recommendations on what uh, services should be contracted out. Um, we find this problematic uh, because of the monetary amount. Um, in this time of fiscal crisis, uh, $2 million is a lot of money. Um, this RFP does have has nothing, um, no information when it comes to uh, how this will benefit the constituency. Uh, the citizens of, the, of Los Angeles, uh, the taxpayer, um, has nothing uh, on how it will streamline services between departments, the communication services between departments and the constituents of Los Angeles and um, LA City workers, LA City departments. Um, also, um, when you're hiring an outside firm with no knowledge of the city's history, its IT infrastructure, um, there's a learning curve involved that you're asking an outside consultant uh, to embark on. Um, that's also we find problematic. Um, and finally, uh, the intention uh, to contract work uh, we find uh, disingenuous as well. Um, so um, SCIU opposes this RFP and we ask uh, this committee and we ask uh, council members in this committee uh, to support us. And thank you. Okay. Uh, um it's a little bit of confusion. This, this item is just informational, but the uh, the proposal, the RFP you're talking about, is uh, has been issued by DWP. Ah, DWP. Jeez, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, ITA. Um, Randy Levin again. The RFP to uh, go out to get an advisor has gone out, um, and so we're going through the process with the CLA, the CAO, everybody to go through and select an advisor. That's part one of this process. And what the advisor is going to do is help collate the information, first of all, because we've got to be able to have and know everything that we have in this entire city to figure out then what to do with it. And then part two is to develop some recommendations on how we move forward. There is no preconceived notion of what it's going to be, whether it's going to be outsourced, whether it's going to be a hybrid, whether it's going to be on-site and off-site, whether it's going to be software as a service, whether, you know, it's it's probably going to end up being some kind of combination. And in all due respect to SCIU, they protested this go, the, uh, the RFP to get an advisor even before we even sent out an RFP. So 
I mean, we need to go through this process anyway. We need to know for sure what we have out there so we can figure out what are we going to do with it. So I think it's premature to be having these discussions until we get the advisor on board and have the process going so that then we can then figure out what we're I, doing. This, uh, this is informational purposes. This is public comment, so it would be inappropriate for us to have any kind of debate going on here. But can I, can I report to that? Uh, that's exactly my point. It, okay. it would be a violation of the Brown Act, I think, for us to go too much deeper here. I just want a clarification. The question is, um, the two million dollars that was referred to that is not in this that is not this RFP is no we don't even know what the the, so the technical advisor is not going to cost us two million we don't know what it's going to cost yet we put it out to see and we have it segmented into sections so we're so asking them to submit proposals and then correct we're okay okay so um, but anyway in any case that matter is not before us I just wanted to get a clarification because it, this was a general presentation and it was referred to in the comments so uh, I think under those grounds it's it's appropriate but to go any deeper would be I think uh, get us into trouble so I don't want to do that well, I but I just wanted for my own information to understand that what the different uh, uh, positions were so that helps um, okay so um, what was the other thing? Well, that's it okay. thank you much we have one more card thank you John Hawkins Thank you, Honorable Council Member Alakong. Um, my name is John Hawkins. I've been employed by the city and in the Department of, uh, of ITA for over 13 years. Um, when I've come, when I first came to ITA, our focus, or prior to the, the current administration, our focus has has moved toward customer service. Um, it's been our goal to provide great customer service uh, consistently and finding the most efficient ways of. of producing that customer service. Um, I'm here to speak directly about the RFP and what's going on. And basically, I, re I represent 150 uh, ITA employees, uh, and I have the ear of a whole lot more. They come to me all the time. And our goal is to be part of the process. Um, we have worked with ITA or requested of ITA to work with us. Uh, and to allow us to be part of this process of discovery. Um, we've proven over the years that we're able to discover uh, systems that, that are out in place in other departments, uh, a point toward uh, such projects as, as uh, Microsoft's um, infrastructure and looking at that and, and working with the departments to look at that. But the point I'm making or trying to make is that we want to be part of the process uh, we've been denied that ability by I ITA telling us that they don't want a joint labor management um, committee working through this process. Back in April, um, Randy Levin spoke before this committee and, and mentioned when asked about what about the employees that may be affected about this. Her answer was, they're smart, they have options. Um, from that point in time, it's been dead silence from management um, even though employees have been worried and concerned, it's only recently, uh, within the last month, that a email went out and say, don't worry about your jobs. Um, they're not going away soon. Um, we want to be part of the process, and we hope this committee will go further in this and help us uh, to work with ITA in discovering what, what this RFP really is about and uh, letting us be the geniuses that we are to come up with bright ideas. <laughs> Um, we can do it. Any problem you have, we can solve. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you for your humility. Um, is there uh, uh, an opportunity for the establishment of a joint labor management committee? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Is, is there an opportunity for us to establish a joint labor management committee? Um, we can. We, we wanted to get the RFP out and start to do the evaluations before we established a committee. And but, it took but, us uh, a It would seem to me that the point of a joint labor management committee is to, um, is to uh, have the opportunity to hear the ideas about, about uh, how to move forward. In this case, so for example, it would seem the joint labor management committee could, might come up with a better RFP. Well, process. Um, 
Look, you know, I, it might have been. I mean, the RFP is out now, and mm -hmm. there were a lot of people involved in the RFP, which is why it did take quite a long time to get it out. Um, so we were really focused on trying to get it out, and so now could be the appropriate time if we want to establish a joint labor committee. But really, you know, the reason we didn't really form anything or, or spend a lot of time with the employees right now is because we were so focused on trying to get the RFP out the door. Okay. Uh, if I if I could just finish my point, I, I if the idea is to get consultation on how to improve our system, but the employees are not participating in it, um, I have a problem with that. Oh, they've been involved. You know, I've been here almost five wait, years. Wait, we have a joint labor management committee. Is it's a representative body. So it's to say that they've been, of course, they've been involved. All your employee, all, all the people involved are employees of the city, but it doesn't have the same um, respect that a joint labor management committee has, because everybody's interest. You know, you set aside all the labor issues, the disputes, the wages, the benefits, and all that, and you talk specifically about how to improve the system. And I found that when we do this, we get incredible ideas from staff that management doesn't often spot. Okay. Well, we can take this back and we can figure out how to do this and, and get, get that the That would be input. very helpful. Figure out how to establish a joint labor management committee? And who to, who to put on it or who wants to be on it and just, you know, yeah. the mechanics. Okay. Okay. Well, I'd appreciate a report back on that piece. Okay. Mr. Carlin Mr. has joined us. Uh, if I could uh, set aside this item for a minute, sure. just take care of items uh, 5 through 8. I'd like to move those on consent uh, with Mr. Carlin's approval. That is done. And items 9 through 12 are note and file items. Uh, they are uh, relative to legislation that is outdated at this point. And so uh, with Mr. Carlin's approval, we are uh, noting and filing those items. Back to item number 1, Mr. Carlin's. Uh, excuse me, Randy, on, on the item that you, you were just dialoguing on, item number one, um, is one of the is one of the facts of the matter that is going on in your department. It, it's always good to try to figure out how we can uh, be much more efficient, how we can retool, how we can think through what should we do in the next year, five years, ten years, et cetera, especially when it comes to information technology systems. But isn't one of the facts of the matter that's facing your department is that you have many, many less personnel bodies to work with now. So therefore, five years ago, with the number of bodies that you had in your department, if you wanted to rethink how our information technology is handled within our city, you have a different panoply of solutions to go toward, knowing that you have the people to move around. Isn't one of the issues you're faced with today is that you don't have anywhere near as many people to move around and retool or what have you that you used to have before? That is that is very correct. Okay. We we had um, uh, close to 780 three years ago, and we have close to 500 now. Mm -hmm. And and has your scope of responsibilities diminished or expanded? Expanded. Okay. But expanded both because of dependence on technology and also it's been a policy of this city over the last five years or so and right before you got here for us to uh, have your department have more direct responsibility rather than having a whole different array of departments having IT responsibilities that, that aren't core to their functions, right? That's correct. Okay, so there's a, a no less than a, a, a massive dual responsibility that has fallen on your department's shoulders even though you have close to 300 bodies less today. And I would even add to that that, you know, it's been proven in a recession, both in the public and private sector, that the demand on IT goes up because 
when you have departments in other areas cutting down they go to the i t department and say if you could only automate this for me or make this efficient or do this for me i could live with ten less people or the spur low schedule or whatever and when we've been cut to the order of magnitude we've been cut it's unfortunate that we have to turn around and then say you know what we would like to do this for you but we just don't have the resources to be able to do it for you and thank you for that information and also i just want to put on the record that i've worked directly with you quite a bit on on a whole panoply of issues and i just want to say that i've never known randy to not want to dialogue with whether it's department heads or elected officials or staff or what have you so i just want to i'm glad to hear that before the the last question you asked chairman uh, was to randy as to whether or not she's okay with uh, putting together or or having a joint labor management committee and following through with discussions and meetings that that i didn't think that that was a problem and you obviously clarified that so thank you you're welcome okay then um obviously we'll continue this is this is sort of the uh, basis for for the committee work and will continue to be so uh, we'll get periodic reports, if, uh, and if you could come back with a specific uh, work with my staff on a specific presentation related to the Joint Labor Management uh, Committee concept, um, I, uh, w with that note, we will uh, move this item forward. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Item number two. Motion Alarcon Cohen West and Garcetti instructing the city administrative officer with the assistance of the Information Technology Agency, Recreation and Parks, and the city libraries to report on the ability to place Wi Fi hotspots in city parks and libraries, the cost and the ability to work with private companies to provide the service. This item is also referred to Arts, Parks and Neighborhoods Committee. Good afternoon, Council Members. Mark Wolf, Executive Officer for ITA. I'm here to provide you with a verbal report back on the efforts of the city to implement and deploy Wi-Fi hotspots in city parks, libraries, and the potential costs and the ability to work with private companies to provide these services. We understand that the City of New York has implemented an innovative program to provide Wi-Fi services in their parks. We'll be contacting them to see if the same type of program can be implemented in the City of Los Angeles and we'll report back to this committee with our findings. If I could, I'd like to provide you with just a brief overview of the progress that we've made over the last several years with public access and helping di bridge the digital divide. Despite this, the economic downturn, the city has been able to expand accessibility to the internet, including Wi-Fi hotspots. In January of 2010, as you're aware, a grant award totaling 7.5 million uh, from ARA funding was made to the city of Los Angeles for the Los Angeles Computer Access Network project we call the LA CAN project. This program is for expanding and upgrading 188 public computer centers at 72 libraries, 43 work centers, and 67 parks and youth and family centers in Los Angeles, in low-income and non-English speaking communities in Los Angeles. So this project is far along. We've actually spent to date about 95% of the funding and it is providing public access services with desktop computers. We were able to, in the library department, recreation and parks, and the community development department in their workforce centers, we were able to upgrade computer desktops that were over five years, some of them over seven years old, and really bat in bad shape. We were also able to use that funding to upgrade the connectivity to the to the internet providing more bandwidth with higher speed and also to provide training at uh, some of these facilities so we'll continue in in response to this motion we will be contacting new york city to see how we can continue to expand wi-fi services in the city and to see what types of innovative programs that we can implement with our partners in the private sector given the city's financial constraints Great. I don't have any questions, do you? Uh, well, I, 
AT&T apparently, what was the gist of what AT&T did in New York? Councilman, I actually don't have the details of that program, but we'll be working with Recreation and Parks to contact them and to get more information and report back to this committee. Well, I appreciate you, your willingness to find out more details before you give us a report, because I can only imagine if AT&T took over the entire community of New York and provided the service throughout their parks, they got some advertising out of it or something, there had to be some kind of mutual benefit between this large private corporation and having provided such a tremendous service to so many sites throughout the largest city in the country. So I look forward to hearing, to get down to the bottom of what exactly took place and how did they make that mutual benefit happen. So thank you. Thank you. By the way, I forgot to ask you, you made a lot of comments related to Recreation and Parks. I didn't hear much about the libraries. Yes. Which is also part of the motion. Yes. For the libraries, we actually, I have actually representative from the library department as well as Recreation and Parks here in the audience with me. Oh, they're very, very small. They come to the table as well. But the good news is that with the 72 locations, the library locations throughout the city, there are not only public access computers, but there's Wi-Fi services at all of those locations. And everyone. So that's already done. That's done. Okay. Great. So we expect you're going to come back with a report in 90 days? Yes. Actually, my instruction says the CAO. Why is it we want the CAO to report back versus the department? Because they're smarter than everybody else. Councilman, we will be working with CAO, helping them support the effort. Okay. I don't mind having the department have the lead on this with the CAO's cooperation and Recreation and Parks in this case. But I think it's a great opportunity. Also, I'd like you to add, if I could add a little piece that says we might want to look at other settings. Maybe if you could ask General Services, what other city settings might we consider Wi-Fi? We will do that. Okay. Then that would be the order, and we'll see you back in 90 days? Thank you. 90 days? Okay. Okay. Items three and four are very similar, so we're going to take them together. Item three is the motion of Bunch, Cricor, and Hunt instructing the Information Technology Agency to report on the feasibility of creating a website such as 311lacd.org or something alike to complement the call center and on similar systems in other municipalities such as New York, Chicago, Miami, and Houston. Item four, as you stated, is similar, and in essence they're asking for the feasibility of creating a city web-based interactive complaint system in order to facilitate the public's ability to report potholes located in city streets. Good afternoon. Mark Wolf, ITA. I'm Ron Olive, Assistant Director with the Bureau of Street Services. Council members, over the past two years, due to the economic downturn, there has been staffing reductions in the 311 call center and throughout city departments, which has resulted in the 311 call center having reduced hours of operation. The hours have been modified from a 24-7 operation two years ago to now 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. business hours. In response to Council's motions, ITA has been working diligently to redesign and overhaul the city's lacity.org website and the 311 and online services, similar to what other cities like New York and Chicago have been doing. And we're pleased to report that we're making excellent progress on this effort, and we're targeting to roll out a beta version of the new lacity.org and 311 services in the next three weeks. We would like to have the website fully operational by February of next year. And if you would allow me, we would like to have Madeline Pugu, our ITA webmaster for lacity.org, give you just a preview of the new prototype for the lacity.org website. Good afternoon. I'm Madeline Pugu. I'm the manager of 
the ITA's uh, web services, e-government and web services group. And to give you a slight background as I prepare the presentation, I actually manage a group of almost 10 employees, two, two uh, part-time uh, student workers. And aside from managing the LACity.org website and the technology that hosts it, we actually manage the technology and the websites uh, of the elected official offices. So we have quite a bit on our plate. Actually, the, your council member, your website, and so is uh, the uh, Council District 6 website is maintained by our group, as well as the mayor's uh, website, a lot of the uh, initiative websites, emergency um, websites that are needed, like the ERIP website. So it gives you an idea of the activity that we have um, on a yearly basis. And the website that I'm about to show you is something that we've been working on for the past four years. It's astonishing to note that we've been working on it for four years, but um, this was more of a grassroots effort. My staff and I have wanted to redesign LACity.org for the longest time, and this is actually a development version of it. But um, fortunately, with the um, support of Randy and Mark, and also support from the council offices allowing us to put a hold on a lot of the redesign requests that are in queue, we've been able to focus on doing LACity.org work primarily for the past maybe six to, to nine months. And so we're at the point where we are going to hire a usability expert. We've finalized the contract just last week so they can come and evaluate the prototype that we've developed so far. And we've developed this uh, by through the past four years gathering feedback from various contacts that I've had in the council offices as well as in departments. So to make this quick, I can show you, I, I can give you a quick idea of what we've prepared for the usability experts to evaluate. And right here on the top, you can see that aside from the main four sections that we normally see, especially in our current website, we've expanded to various sections such as educational resources, which a lot of departments and elected official offices have invested a lot of resources towards, as well as featuring job opportunities and volunteer opportunities. So there are two new areas starting from the top um, that we'll be focusing on in the new website. We still have our traditional government links here, uh, mayor and council links, as well as links to the elected official uh, and depart uh, commissions and committees and, and bureaus. We have a more user-friendly looking highlights area which allows people to select a, a visually interesting photo, um, put a headline, headline and also description along with that headline, and then allow people to uh, feature even more content associated with that highlight. So it could be a related services. They could link straight to related services in 311, uh, feature a video that maybe Channel 35 produced for them, uh, flyers or any press releases related uh, to that highlight. And then below it, we're calling it for now a video bar. And what we plan doing here is making it a lot more dynamic where if Channel 35's LA This Week um, uh, is on air, that's their uh, weekly sort of magazine 30-minute segment, I'm sorry. Um, it, if it's on air, we'll actually indicate that it's on the air. And then if there's a council meeting, even council audio, such as this meeting, if it's going on now, we'll actually have a little indicator saying that it's live. So we, programmatically, we, we have the ability to do this, and we're working on that now. And the city's events calendar, which is very actively used, especially by Rec and Parks, um, has been buried for a while in our current website. We're bringing up the content and making it very real time so that every hour or every 30 minutes it's updated. So if 11 o'clock passes by, that disappears and you see more of the upcoming events. So my staff and I have actually looked at this a while, for a while and, and we're happy to see that it gets updated on a regular basis. And we still have the, way, uh, the ENS, the ways to uh, subscribe to receive agendas, and even our My Neighborhood basic information. So we're not removing stuff that's on the current website. We're actually putting more and making it even more visually appealing. What I'd like to note, which relates to the current item, is that we, working with 311, with 311, have been able to bring up a lot of the content that they have been generating, more of behind the scenes, but we're bringing it up to the public. So they have actually been putting together statistics and noting what are the most requested services. And what we're doing is we're bringing that to the forefront and putting it on the new LACD.org website. So this is updated on a weekly basis. So whatever has been requested for the most in the past week will come up here. And we even further tailor that down as you go into the different um, different pages. If, for example, businesses uh, want to find out what are the most requested services tailored to them, they will actually see that as well. So we're, we're doing a lot of automation here. 
And then if it's identified in the citywide services directory that that particular service has sort of a self-service feature, functionality, an online form, uh, let's say anti-graffiti request, you can put in your address and request for uh, graffiti cleanup, that should appear here under find it online. And so such as um, here, we can actually, we've categorized the different online services, if I can get my pointer to work, but you can see that under find it online, there's a drop-down list and we can ask people if they want to make a payment, request for service, they can go here, look up, look up records and, and the like. So this one is a page that's tailored more for the residents. And so even there's even a highlights area. If it expires from the home page, it will stay here and can be can be maintained for a longer period of time and and you know speak to the residents. So this is what we've developed so far, and of course we have the categories of the 311 services outlined here too. And then uh, for businesses, so here's a list of online services if they want to see all the service requests. They can see a listing as, as long as it's tagged appropriately in the citywide services directory. And here for businesses, you can see that we've even put together the latest business opportunities that are available from the uh, LA Bavin website, so the Business Assistance Virtual Network. So we're going out there seeing what systems are available, what data is available, and what we can pull up and tailor to the, the you know our stakeholders, our public stakeholders. And even a special interface for visitors. We want to increase tourism and, vis and explore exploration of LA and spending money within LA. So we even created a special interface for that. That's pretty much what. I mean. So yeah. in in summary, uh, what we kind of the the main emphasis of our redesign has been not only in terms of usability, making the website more accessible, but also pushing information forward to the forefront so that it reduces the number of clicks an individual has to do to be able to get information. And the other thing, too, that we're doing is, again, trying to push the services information to the forefront, and especially the self-service information, the self-service transactions that are available on the city's website. So this really transitions to the the second item, number um, item number four on the agenda, relating to the Bureau of Sanitation and the online uh, complaint form. So ITA has been working with the Bureau of Sanitation and other departments to see if we can come up with creative ways to implement more self-service access to both 311 and city services to enable greater accessibility via the internet and to also make the, these services available on a 24-7 basis. And rollout of the new LACity.org website that was discussed uh, just previously to this is really going to be the first step in enhancing access to 311 and city services. Implementing an interactive web-based complaint system will be really the next item that we'll look at as we're exploring ways to further enhance city services. So we are working in partnership with the Bureau of Sanitation and we'll be continuing to explore how we can creatively, with the fiscal constraints that the city has, move forward with the initiative that's been requested. The other thing that we're also doing is we're also looking at other types of technologies. In addition to having the capability of having mobile access and be able to submit service requests, we're also looking at phone technology because there's a lot of new and innovative ways that you may have experienced yourself in dealing with call centers from the private sector, even some other government agencies. For example, uh, we're, we just this week met with a vendor and we're looking at a technology solution they have for augmenting a phone system where they have something called a virtual on hold feature. And basically when you're on hold and sometimes when you call a call center, it'll actually tell you the projected amount of wait time that you have projected. And in a system like this, with this virtual call, cap virtual hold capability, it'll actually ask you if you would prefer providing a phone number and the call center will automatically call you back as soon as you're up in the queue rather than waiting. So we're looking at innovative ways that we can introduce technologies like that to really improve services in the city and improve, uh, improve overall response time given the reductions that the city has had to sustain in terms of budgets across all of the departments. Okay. Um, first of all, let me ask, uh, what is the best way to combine these two items? Because they seem uh, they're a little bit different, but 
but not much. Um, well, you could have one report back that um, references both council file numbers, and then that could maybe get a new council file number. No, I couldn't. <laughs> Maria's shaking her head no. Um, if they submit a report addressing both uh, files, both files will move forward together. together. Say that again. If you're asking them to report back with one report addressing both matters, the report will be um, attached to both files and the matter will go forward to council together. Okay. Okay. That, if that's the best we can do, fine. So we have two, two files. Um, the, um, Okay, this this was specific to Bureau of Street Services. Both both seem to imply. Did did I see something on the Kokori, on the excuse me the Labange motion? Did it reference Street Services at all? Number four. It, it didn't. It was number four. Number four. Yes. Okay, so that was the. That's the that, online complaint interactive. They're uh, both Labange motions. Uh, yes. 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 Okay, um, so in item number four, is specific to street services. How, can, can maybe staff from IT or street services for that matter tell me what, is there anything in item uh, four that would be missed in item three? Uh, well, item four is really, I think, it, the way we're approaching this is really the kind of the second phase for expanding the accessibility or self-service uh, for city services. Part one is really the website, the lacity.org redesign, which will put 311 services more in the forefront, including Bureau of Street Services, all of the different services that they provide from pothole repairs to Tree trimming. Well, actually, actually, I have to correct you on that because it specifically says uh, a web-based interactive complaint system. This, the system you're talking about is not a web-based system. Correct. So the, the, the lacity.org redesign is kind of the. It sounds to me phase like one. It sounds to me like project. the system you're talking about is very different than this web-based system. It, it is different, although once we have the web-based uh, complaint tracking system, it will be tied into lacity.org so that people that go to the website for accessing services will have a single face to the city. Okay, but they would be using the same technology? Yeah. That, that you're contemplating? The, the, <laughs> the back-end system, the system that will actually operate the complaint tracking system would yeah, likely I, be different yeah. technology than what we're using on the front end for the it's web. It's hard to have this conversation uh, without having the uh, other technology mentioned, but, the, but the, uh, the nut of it is that the department is exploring uh, alternative systems to enhance our web-based system. That is correct. Uh, and our web-based system is not necessarily completely designed. It's, it's just that uh, we may have something to layer over it uh, to make it more usable. I, I think that, Councilman, I think that we're actually in parallel making progress on both of these okay. initiatives. Okay. So it would be appropriate for us to, uh, um, to ask for the department to come back with a report, uh, one report on both items three and four, uh, and uh, any new information we may have in when do you want me to bring this back? When, when would be a good time to bring this back? See how tricky I am? W when would be a good time to bring this report back? I think 90 days would allow us to have a more substantial update for you. That's great. That's exactly what uh, Marissa put down here. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to see you're working in sync. Um, Okay, so that will be the instruction. We, we will uh, ask the departments come. Thank you, for, thank you for that fantastic presentation, um, uh, both, both. Um, but 
uh, so the instruction would be to have ITA to report back in 90 days on the status of the uh, the continuous improvement of the web, website, the 311 website systems, uh, as well as uh, with a particular focus on street services uh, and uh, any new innovations that may add to the benefit of those programs. Uh, and that report would come back in 90 days. These reports would be identical for item three and four, but we would uh, tie those items together so that they will uh, be heard at the same time. Okay. Thank Great. you. I have no uh, no cards. I think we've covered all our business, and uh, therefore this meeting is adjourned.